San Francisco's problem is they don't like the way the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, defines the city's responsibility in their discharge permits. The city claims that what they refer to as generic prohibitions are not definitive enough to hold them accountable for violations. Mr. Chief Justice, and may it please the court, Section 301B1C of the Clean Water Act assigns EPA the job of setting the effluent limitations necessary to meet and implement water quality standards. The water quality standards are not the limitations themselves. Instead, they set the goals for the water body. EPA must translate those goals into discharge limitations. The first question that should have been asked is, if the Constitution empowers Congress to assign an executive agency to set limits on effluent discharges. There's another problem that isn't identified here, but may help explain San Francisco's concerns. You see, the EPA doesn't set water quality standards. The state does. But as we'll find out later in oral arguments, those water quality standards don't have the force of law. Only the EPA discharge limitations do. The generic prohibitions fail this task. As Judge Collins explained below, the generic prohibitions erase the distinction between water quality standards and discharge limitations, making them one and the same. The problem is, as San Francisco's attorney Tara Steele explains, is that the EPA didn't give the city discharge limitations, but basically repeated the state's water quality standard. The generic prohibitions revive the very cause or contribute standard Congress repealed. And they do not function as discharge limitations. As the Second Circuit recognized, they add nothing that tells a permit holder how to control its discharges. Problems with using water quality standards, though, is the reason Congress amended the Clean Water Act to implement the permitting system now in place. What EPA cannot do is expose permit holders to liability based on receiving water conditions it cannot control. The city also claims that these generic prohibitions open the city as a discharge permit holder to legal liability through their vagueness. The generic prohibitions are also inconsistent with the Act's permit shield. The shield protects permit holders from liability as long as they comply with their permit terms. But by imposing indeterminate requirements, the generic prohibitions prevent permit holders from relying on the shield's protections. San Francisco is therefore exposed to crushing criminal and civil penalties even when it otherwise complies with its 300-page permit. 